sermon text is second epistle of Paul to Timothy, the first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience the way my forefathers did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day, longing to see you, even as I recall your tears, so that I may be filled with joy. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. And for this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity, but now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. For this reason I also suffer these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Retain the standard of sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us the treasure which has been entrusted to you. Let's pray. Father, we pray that uh, in the words of our pastor as he leads today, that we would kindle afresh the spirit within us, Father, that we would guard against uh, all temptation, and that we would go and spread the gospel from this small church into this community, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. invites young Timothy in this passage to join with him in his suffering. I don't know if you caught that, but the reading uh, that Ron read, uh, Paul says, join with me in my suffering. Now, in the Pew Bibles, uh, NRSV, you don't get the gist of that. Uh, so I'm glad he didn't read from the Pew Bible because he, he really does stress that he wants him to join with him in his suffering. That's quite a statement, isn't it? Can you imagine making a statement like that to your friends? Join with me in my suffering. And I, I think that's quite an invitation, really, if you think about it. I mean, can, you know, that's not the kind of invitations we usually give out in churches, is it? I mean, can you imagine this morning when it comes time for us to give the invitation, if I, if I stand here and say, I want you to come and join with us in our suffering, and, and your life is, not, is going to be more miserable, and you're going to be persecuted, uh, you're not, you know, things aren't going to go always the way you think it should, and we want you to join us. I wonder how many takers we'd have on that. Most of the time when we give an invitation, it's, a, it's more about, hey, uh, you know, become a Christian and, and you know, God's going to bless you and, and, you know, those things may be true, but, you know, we don't tell the whole story sometimes. How's this for a mission statement? Come suffer with us. Wow. I wonder how many takers we get on that. That's exactly what the Apostle Paul is saying to young Timothy. That's not the kind of thing you hear today from our modern, prosperity-driven, jet-flying, uh, health and wealth type preachers. You won't hear many of them say, come suffer with us, join with me in the fellowship of suffering. 
But that is exactly what the gospel call really is. After all, we're asking people to take up their cross. Right? I mean, it, the whole thing behind the cross is suffering and shame. And if we want to get real and be honest today, the Christian life is not always hunky-dory, is it? It's not always up. It's not always sunshine. Sometimes we suffer. And so, as we look at this, we understand that Paul is inviting Timothy to a particular kind of a fellowship, a fellowship of suffering. Join with me, he says. Become partakers with me in my suffering. Now, when he wrote this, he is in prison. He's a prisoner for the gospel, and he is writing these words to young Timothy, knowing that his days are numbered, but he says to him, <coughs> join with me in my suffering. You know, there's something about having others to suffer with us, to bear our burdens with us, that makes the suffering a little more bearable. We can bear almost any burden if we know that there's people who care and people who are in this with us. That's why things like AA and NA and grief counseling and divorce recovery and all these small groups are so popular because there's something special about sitting around with a group of people who have been through something like you've been through. They understand and you know that you're not crazy, that the feelings that you're having and the anger and the hurt and the frustrations are shared with others. And you share in that suffering together, and there's healing in that sharing of suffering. And so, as we begin to think about this, we understand that, that we're invited, and that's really what the church is, isn't it? It's a place where we can share in our sufferings together. And uh, that's, um, I think about in my own life, I was, uh, I want to do a little reading here for uh, in just a second, but in my life I remember one time I was preaching at a church, and I've shared this story, but one particular point I wanted to make in that is that at the end of the sermon at this little church in Owensville, uh, the state police walks in and, uh, and then takes someone out, and they come back in, and I just finished up. We're getting ready to close, and he whispers in my ear, your son has been in a terrible accident. He's been burned, and they flew him on a helicopter to Cabell Huntington Hospital. And at that moment, I, I mean, uh, I don't know what you would have done, but I wanted people praying, and I didn't even know what was going on. But at that moment, I don't recall if I asked them to or if it just happened, but everyone just gathered around me in a circle and began laying on hands on me and on each other and began praying for me, and, and we began holding each other. And there was something about that moment that get, allowed me to carry me on for the rest of that, because it became like a, it really was a terrible, terrible time. I remember when I had, uh, we lost our first daughter. I was, she had only lived six days. It, it was a tough time, and how the church carried me through that time. In fact, I was just a young man, about 21 years old, and, uh, you know, didn't have uh, much money at all, and certainly didn't have enough to pay for expenses, and, and uh, the church just began handing me money. And I remember that they were giving me money, and, and when I went to pay for the funeral expenses and the burial, I had just enough to pay and I don't know if it's because the funeral director felt sorry for me, and that's all he charged me, but I, all the money that I've been given, I laid it on that desk, and it paid for the funeral. And see, that was sharing and suffering in ways other than just feeling sorry for me, but actually helping in other ways. Will Willimon uh, had this to say. Let me see if I can find this real quick. I like this. He said the Apostle Paul invites us to join in our suffering. And he said, uh, I think that this is one of the important ministries of the church, to spread some of the pain around. I suspect that is why some of you stick with the church, despite its faults. You went through, through some kind of pain in your life, a divorce, an illness, the loss of a loved one, and the church stuck with you. 
and became your fellowship of suffering. You said to your church, join with me in my suffering, just like Paul to young Timothy. And the church stepped up and stuck with you. Isn't that what the body of Christ is all about? I don't know, and I don't understand. I know some people are more private, and they don't want people to know their business and their struggles they're going through. But I want you to know that when my son, when his life was on the line, I wanted everybody praying. I wanted them to know, and I wanted people to share in the suffering, and, and people called, and cards were sent, and all these things helped in the time of suffering. And so we're called to this particular kind of fellowship, the fellowship of suffering. And the church was definitely suffering. Uh, in uh, the readings for Lamentations today, uh, the, the readings were talking about how that the cities have been burned and they were mourning. <coughs> the ways of Zion's do mourn because none come to the solemn feast. Her adversaries are the chief and her enemies prosper. And during this time, their cities were burned, and people were crying, and people were hurting. And in the psalm reading, he talked about the fact that uh, they were uh, asked to sing songs like they normally did. But they said, how can we sing songs in a foreign land when our people and our city are destroyed? How can we be happy, and how can we sing songs? The Apostle Paul says we need to share in that fellowship of suffering. But it's a particular kind of suffering. He goes on to say, suffering for the gospel. It's not just suffering because of illness. And then we do that. We share with those things. And, and you know, in church, if we have prayer requests, you know, normally we'll have 99% uh, of health-related things. And that's okay. I mean, we, we do that. I get that. But that is not the kind of prayers that the Apostle Paul is talking about. That is not the kind of prayers that occupied the prayer life of Jesus. You see, the church throughout most of its history has endured <coughs> a lot of suffering. And because of their faith and because they stood for Christ, they particularly endured this suffering. And so Paul was in jail not because he did anything wrong, but because he was doing something right. He was preaching the gospel. And he was suffering because of that very thing. There's a lot of people go to jail that deserve to be there. But not always. And he was one of those. And so he says to young Timothy, I want you to join with me and share with me in my suffering. And this, this gospel uh, sometimes can cause uh, people to be uh, all kinds of distracted and, and, and you know, kind of get, uh, sometimes we get divided over things. Um, you know, you read about it all the time. And, and you know, <coughs> here in North America, we don't see a lot of that. You know, you see occasions of it, and I think it's on the horizon. Uh, I think it's, it's definitely coming into play. I mean, just recently, uh, I, someone shared an article with me about uh, Iowa uh, University and how that they had uh, particularly singled out Christian groups and sort of uh, uh, were causing them, you know, keeping them from having their groups. And uh, thankfully, the court stepped in, in, on, in this case, on their behalf. But we see it more and more. But you, uh, worldwide, it's a thing that's very real. We don't realize how blessed we are. Uh, so the World Watch uh, uh, Agency says that there's like 245 million people that are being persecuted for their faith right now in the world. Over 4,000 Christians were killed last year for standing up for the faith in our world, just for simply for naming the name of Jesus and living out their faith. And so it's real. It's a real thing. But here in North America, we don't suffer a whole lot for that. Uh, there may be times where we might do the right thing and suffer for it. For the most part, we don't. I think we're used to our, uh, you know, our air-conditioned uh, churches, and we're, we're not persecuted, thank God, at this point. But it could happen. And we know that there's people all over the world that suffer, and we ought to be joining in with them and praying for them at the same time. Join with me 
in my suffering, he says. What a call for us today to bear one another's burdens, to share one another's hearts. I know that there's a lot of people in our church right now that need our prayers. Thankful today to see Jeff and Christina with us and not been able to be with us for a while and what they've had to endure and some of you have had to endure and we stand with you and we continue to stand with you and pray for you. And we're thankful today for the family of God that holds one another accountable and holds one another up and we can share in these things today. The Bible says cast you know, to cast your care upon him, for he cares for you. So we are to share in our suffering. So the point here today is that there is a fellowship of suffering. But beyond that, he says that we rely on the power of God. And so there's power in our suffering. God gives us power that we can endure. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. God gives you power to endure it. And also there's purpose in our suffering. God will bring about his purposes if we will simply allow him to do that. So I encourage you today to keep on keeping on for the faith. To share your sufferings with others. And let others know when you're hurting. Because all around us we see people all the time who take their lives. People who do crazy things. Because they don't share with other people what's going on. And so I encourage you to do that today as we share.